The Mysteries of Lost Technologies Throughout human history, we have enhanced technology by building on what has come before. Major discoveries and innovations have been passed down across centuries, with each generation attempting to improve on them. Or at least, that's what has happened on occasion. A number of technologies have also perished with the passage of time. Hello and welcome to Z. And today we're looking at amazing technologies that have been lost or forgotten throughout human history. Do you require answers to the major questions? Then why not subscribe to Z for more videos like this one and ring the bell for more thought-provoking information. Let us begin with one of the most renowned examples of a lost technology, the Eastern Roman Empire's incendiary weapon, Greek fire. The Roman Empire was divided into Western and Eastern Empires in 395 CE. The Western Roman Empire would be destroyed within the next century. But the Eastern, often known as the Byzantine Empire, lasted another thousand years and was a formidable force during the medieval era. Greek fire, a powerful incendiary liquid projected from flamethrowers, was one of its most dreaded weapons. In reality, it was called Greek fire by later crusaders, it was known as Roman fire at the time. It was invented around 672 and played an important role in Roman defense during the early Muslim conquests. Greek fire was mentioned in writings until the 13th century when it appears to have fallen out of favor. For generations, fire had been employed in warfare, but no one had done it quite like the Byzantines. They had invented an extremely flammable substance, comparable to modern-day napalm, which would burn on top of water. It was even stated that coming into contact with water would set it on fire. The Byzantines had strong, pressurized cannons that sprayed the liquid onto enemy ships. In the most literal sense, these were flamethrowers. The weapon's development was a closely guarded secret, with operators and technicians only allowed to know about one specific component of it. This ensured that no one could discover their secrets. Even after capturing some of the chemical and dozens of flamethrowers in 814, Bulgarians couldn't figure out how to make it all work. Greek fire was eventually phased out, and no accounts of its use after the 13th century exist. The recipe was kept so secret that it was lost to the passage of time. The composition is still debated among historians, and we have been unable to duplicate it. Damascus steel is another substance that has baffled experts. Damascus steel, which was manufactured from the 3rd to the 17th century CE, was an extremely durable substance that could be sharpened to a fine edge. In the Near East, it was used to forge sword blades. It was forged using a steel known as woods from southern India, leaving unusual wavy patterns over the surface. The origin of the steel's name is debatable. It could have been called after Damascus, Syria's capital. It could also be derived from Damascus, a swordsmith who created this sort of weapon. Another hypothesis is that it is derived from Damas, the Arabic word for water, and refers to the rippling pattern on the metal surface. Legend has it that Damascus steel can cut through a rifle barrel. The method of forging such blades, however, remains a mystery. Although modern steel outperforms them, they are nonetheless quite well made for the time. A German study team claimed in 2006 that the blades contained nanowires and carbon nanotubes, which could have resulted from plant fibers introduced during the forging process. These nanotubes considerably reinforced the blades, placing the manufacturing process centuries ahead of its time. Another important element was the impurity rich were used to make wood steel. These or veins eventually ran dry, leaving smiths without the raw materials they required. It is believed that this is the most important reason why we can't reproduce the metal now, and that without the same raw ingredients utilized in the past, we will never be able to copy it exactly. Returning to the Romans, another long-lasting yet enigmatic substance was Roman concrete. Or as they put it, opus cementitium. Modern concrete has a life expectancy of 50 to 100 years, however Roman concrete can survive at least two millennia. 
It was widely utilized around 150 BCE, resulting in an architectural revolution that produced buildings that are still surviving today. Consider the Pantheon in Rome, which has a massive concrete dome for a roof and has been standing for over 2,000 years. It's also somewhat self-healing, with the material used causing the formation of a rare mineral, and it may spontaneously fix its own cracks over time. Many people attempted to discover the empire's technique of manufacturing for hundreds of years after its demise. The mystery recipe was unexpectedly recently uncovered, with experts ultimately solving the conundrum in 2023. Quicklime, a highly reactive type of limestone, and volcanic ash are the main constituents, neither of which is used in modern concrete. It can also withstand tough underwater conditions for thousands of years with little deterioration. Another advantage of the material is that it is substantially less expensive than current concrete, costing up to 60% less to produce. Furthermore, the reduced temperature of the manufacturing process results in a lower environmental imprint. This makes it a contender for the most durable building material of all time, and it may potentially be used to help keep rising sea levels at bay. But we couldn't talk about lost technologies without mentioning the pyramids. The first Egyptian pyramids were constructed about 4,500 years ago. Archaeologists have struggled to comprehend how they were built. It is commonly assumed that slaves built the pyramids, however, modern researchers believe that it was the effort of thousands of paid laborers, many of whom were farmers. These farmers worked on the construction during seasons when water made farming difficult. There would also have been highly talented artisans. Building a pyramid for your pharaoh, who was regarded as a divinity on earth, was considered an honor in general. We now have a general idea of how they are being built. Nearby quarries were used to chisel the pyramid blocks. It is believed that they were then delivered to the pyramid bases through the Nile River and a network of canals. They could also have been pulled on sleds, with the sand underneath wetted so they could slide across with ease. How the blocks were hoisted and put atop each other once they arrived remains a mystery. The most widely accepted explanation is that workmen used ramps. They could possibly have used levers or ropes with pulleys and counterweights. Some believe the pyramids were built by aliens because they were too difficult for humans to build. There is no evidence of extraterrestrial intervention, and the notion may underestimate human inventiveness. Even if we ever fully comprehend how mankind constructed the pyramids, it will only add to their awe. Finally, what about in our own era? Will the miracles of today's technology survive into the future? We are surrounded by modern items, but in many situations, very little effort is being made to preserve them. Video games are one example of this. According to a recent analysis published by the Video Game History Foundation, 87% of all games released before 2010 are critically endangered. With data storage technologies changing so swiftly in our day and age, there is little emphasis placed on conserving previous ways. These outdated games and consoles are no longer available, are seldom, if ever, re-released, and degrade over time. At this rate, not only will early video games be gone, but vast amounts of other data may also be lost. This is a phenomenon known as digital obsolescence, and some believe it may even result in a digital dark age, in which large amounts of information stored on obsolete storage technologies will be lost to time. Fortunately, more efforts are being done to save older media devices, and hopefully our digital era will be preserved for future generations. However, as the technologies in this movie demonstrate, nothing is completely invulnerable. What are your thoughts? Is there anything we left out? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell to stay up to date on our latest content.